Hello my dear friends, welcome back to the channel Exotic Scents. I'm comparing two amazing scents. One is a reasonably priced designer fragrance from the house of Dior. And this is the Sauvage Very Cool Spray. A very cheesy name. I would never name a fragrance like that. But there is re there, there's, there's a serious reason why it's called Very Cool. Or at least I'm assuming it's called uh, Very Cool because of that. This is a fresh take on the Sauvage original Eau de Toilette, which was released uh, by Francois de Manchi, one of the most popular perfumers who has worked wonders for Dior. Dior Homme lineup, especially with his uh, unique combination of leather and iris, he did some wonders in that range and I think that's what made him Francois de Manchi. He might have done some other scents as well, but this is something that made him you know, globally popular. Very Cool Spray is definitely better than the original Sauvage for, for uh, a number of reasons and I'll discuss that later on. Let's talk about the second scent. This is Roger Parfum's amazing Elysium. This is the Elysium Cologne Spray. There's a Pure Parfum Spray and there's a Cologne Spray. People think that this is a weaker version of the scent but this is a very long lasting powerful statement maker. It is slightly unique. Uh, coming from the house of Roger. Roger makes some very complex fine scents, classical European sheep uh, style, style of scents. There's fugues, there's complex orientals. He, he's, he's a man uh, who has, a, you know, he loves different materials, working with different materials. And uh, his musk fragrances, his oud fragrances, all have been fairly popular. In fact, he's probably one of the most recognizable faces in the niche world of perfumes. Elysium was slightly disappointing for the people who were expecting a classical European fragrance, obviously. But at the same time, let me tell you guys, even though this may seem like a simple fragrance, it is definitely complex, has a lot of character, smells brilliant. It has those typical designer sort of vibes as well. It gives off a typical uh, fruity aquatic sort of vibe. Uh, but uh, this has a lovely background of something ambery, something uh, which makes this fragrance definitely a little extra. Feels costly, but it is probably the cheapest Roger scent. And uh, I think probably the most sold as well. That's what I had predicted when I first reviewed the scent. And I still believe it is a fine, fine scent. Now, the question is, why am I comparing these two scents? And does it even make sense? Yes, definitely it makes sense. The first time that I reviewed Roger's Elysium, I did say that this in some ways is similar to scents like Dior Sauvage. It is similar to scents like Creed Aventus. And I'm not comparing these scents. I'm just saying that there was a time when these fresh, citrusy, uh, sweet musky fragrances were, were a trend. And somehow, Roger decided, okay, let's make my brand bigger. Let's introduce the public to a scent which can be e easily appreciated, can be easily understood, doesn't have to be a big statement maker, does not have to be too unique. And let's not compromise on ingredients. So let's give them uh, a unique summer scent, which is at the same time quite simple. So this is what it is. And both of these scents are quite comparable. There are sweet citruses in both these fragrances. There is an aquatic element, an undeniable aquatic element. Aquatic element usually is something in a perfume which will remind you of the seaside. Imagine the color blue, aqua, aqua marine notes, marine notes, oceanic notes. That's what we call these notes in perfumery. And it is basically a synthetic representation of something natural which comes from the sea, the ambergris. So the, both of these fragrances have a rich dose of ambergris related aroma molecules. And the very cool spray, the best part about this scent is that this is definitely an improved version of Sauvage. Sauvage is Ambroxan or whatever that synthetic molecule was which you find in many other designer fragrances gave me a strong headache because of how strong it was. Now this may be a subjective case. That was one of the reasons why many people rejected Sauvage straight away and they felt that Dior is moving into uh, a c c commercial sort of direction like this is money motivated definitely profit motivated there was 
um, you know, we have expectations as consumers. We are no more consumers. We can say we are hardcore perfume lovers, so we expect something extra. Like a runner expects something from a running shoe. That's why you have brands like Asics, Mizuno, you have brands like Hoka, you have uh, Brooks. Now, typically, what do you hear of? You hear about Nikes, you hear about Adidas. So, you don't hear of these companies. So, here we have niche scents like uh, Rochas Elysium, and we also have the Dior Homme lineup. But those had character, those were definitely unique, those smelt really nice. But when you, when you graduate, when you, uh, you know, uh, become more experienced with scents, you do realize that uh, it's actually uh, a basic um, uh, iris which is available throughout most perfume companies, uh, most uh, famous, uh, more of the popular iris perfumes. There's a huge dose of Tonka to it. There is your typical synthetic vanilla to it. That's what I have realized. The Orum Intense, one of my favorite fragrances from designer brands. Now, does not give me the exact uh, feeling as it did like a few years back. So that's one of the reasons why people rejected so much. They were like, this is too, too, too basic. Friends of the Mashi, give us something better. Give us something hardcore. But guys, I've been wearing this scent for some time now. And really, it, it surprised me. That Ambroxan part or that synthetic part uh, about, you know, in the Sauvage Uti Toilet has been taken care of in this particular version. I have the Parfum version as well. I've also tried the recent one. Uh, they're, they're, they're basically just selling flankers uh, because Sauvage is so successful. This is an extremely long-lasting scent. Uh, and uh, it, it has a definite bit of complexity to it. Now I understand why people love it because it is just so easy to wear. People like it. People never complain when you're wearing the scent and it leaves you with a very fresh sort of, um, you can say, feeling. It's a very refreshing feeling straight out of shower. It's slow, it's soapy and it gives you a beautiful sort of uh, this, this mist. I love this mist, by the way. Check it out. This is probably one of the reasons they got the distribution right. So even though it is a basic scent, you get the whole picture. There are different elements in this, in this fragrance. There's sweetness, there's a bit of herbal spiciness, a very abstract sort of powderiness to the scent. There is um, a good use of something which represents ambergris. It's not musky in any way. And... Uh, those lovely citruses, citruses at, the, at the top, they are quite, quite juicy. It's a lovely scent. But it is synthetic. It is definitely synthetic. And you cannot just say that this, this is something that typical uh, frag, frag heads or perfume heads will like. So to solve, to solve that problem, we have Raja's Elysium. I think Raja did a wonderful thing with this release. He released something which most people will relate with. A fine mist there. Immediately you get a lot of citruses like you would get in Dior Sauvage, the very cool spray. But you don't get that sharpness. You don't get that uh, soapy sharpness that you get from Dior Sauvage. It's sweet. It's definitely sweeter. It's better smelling. There is a fair dose of complexity to the scent. The spiciness here is minimal. And it just smells so good. It's, it's not too complex. It, it does not transform much. But when you sniff this, when you smell this scent uh, in the air or on someone else, I have gifted a bottle to my father as well. You sense that there is something rich and exotic in the scent, which is completely missing from the Dior Sauvage. So it's a lovely scent, even though this is just the cologne version, it will give you a fantastic longevity. Both of these scents are absolutely brilliant for summers. Dior Sauvage definitely being more typical. This is a bit, you know, better. You definitely feel the difference. You can wear this comfortably. You don't have to worry about that sharpness, that annoying detergent-like soapiness that you get from your typical designers and specifically the Dior Sauvage here. But guys, I'll tell you, there's a huge price difference between these. The Dior Sauvage is like one third of this, 
even lesser in some of the markets. In India, it is expensive. Now, the, coming to the very cool part, the very cool part about this is that this is an air spray. It does not have the typical aerosols that you find in deodorants and these spray perfumes that spoil the environment. This is very, very safe and um, it is very ozone friendly. Now, that's the most beautiful part about the scent. That's why it's very, very cool. Now, it comes in a can, so it's easy to carry. You get the scent of Sauvage, a better Sauvage, and uh, you get the performance, you get an excellent longevity. You can wear it on your skin, you can wear it on your armpits, you can wear it on your neck, on your chest, shoulders, and you can uh, wear it like a deodorant. It gets you that fine mist, and uh, it's a lovely scent with, 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 a, with a very simple sort of... Uh, arrangement but at the same time it is something that is quite enjoyable quite, quite refreshing and of course it is reasonably priced for a Dior fragrance now the Rojas Elysium is uh, has the has that typical skeleton but it is done with a better hand this is done by an artist definitely feels much better because there are more ingredients costly ingredients available to this perfumer he can charge you more because this smells great this this definitely feels like a better arrangement there is um, some basicness to this fragrance but at the same time it has a lovely uh, atypical slightly upscale backbone which this fragrance is really known for the exoticness of this fragrance is definitely there the diffusiveness of this fragrance definitely beats the sauvage hands down but both of these fragrances are fantastic i urge you to check them out if you haven't because different people have different budgets i'm pretty sure you love both these scents people who are running away from the or sauvage in general would like the um, there's there's high chance that you'll like this fragrance over the rest and the people who are a bit fussy about the soapy synthetic uh, 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 smells that come from these designer fragrances definitely will enjoy the Elysium a lot and this is the cologne version it gives you fantastic longevity and I think for what you get it also gives you a nice value for money the presentation also is great and it comes from a reputable uh, niche brand definitely something which you'll have to pay a little extra for. So this was my review and a comparison of these two scents, which are similar in style. And I hope you enjoyed today's video, got to learn something. And as always, if you liked it, please leave a like and share this video with your friends. So let them know that the channel exists where we talk about fragrances, which are unique and exotic. Take care. Bye-bye.